Welcome back, folks. Greg Silverman here, Chief Investment Officer, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, we take a look at videos that we curate across our social media platform, a pretty big platform. We're on all different social media networks. And then we measure every week what all is done well. They are traditionally investment focused uh, articles, and they really somewhat resonate with some of the investment themes that we track and follow for ourselves and for our clients. If you want to see those investment themes, take a look down below. There's a link to a bunch of LinkedIn groups so you can see and please join. So without further ado, this is our first article of this week or from last week that did well. And it's a crypto article, so that's pretty cool. Bankman Freed warned some crypto exchanges already secretly insolvent. Okay, let's check. Check it out. After throwing no, we don't want to follow him. Get rid of that. After throwing lifelines to trouble digital, got it, currency platforms, BlockFi and Voyager Digital, Sam Bankman Freed, 30 year old billionaire, founder of FTX, warned that some crypto exchanges will soon fail. All right, let's read more. The question in everyone's mind in the crypto world is whether we've reached the market bottom. So this was June 28th. Okay, it's just under a month old. Nearly two trillion in crypto market value has evaporated since November. Two bellwether digital assets, Luna, a forty billion dollar crypto asset associated with Terra USD, a sixteen billion dollar stablecoin designed to maintain parity with the US dollar, have collapsed. Earlier this month, Bitcoin traded for below twenty thousand, its lowest level since December twenty twenty, and I would say as of this recording, it's about twenty three thousand. But the fallout is far from complete. Earlier this month, Singapore-based Three Arrows Capital, 3AC, a highly levered crypto trading firm with 200 million of exposure to Luna, revealed that it was nearly insolvent. Three Arrows had borrowed large sums from numerous crypto firms in New Jersey's Wager Digital and New York-based BlockFi. In order to survive, Three Arrows Digital, the two digital asset exchanges turned to Three Arrows default, the two digital asset exchanges turned to billionaire Sam Bankman-Fried, founder of FTX. And the richest person in crypto with some 20.5 billion. Wow. Between FTX and his quantitative trading firm Alameda, he provided the company with 750 million in credit lines. There's no guarantee that Bankman Fried will recoup his investment. You know, we're willing to do a somewhat bad deal here if that's what it takes to sort of stabilize things and protect customer fees. Okay, let's read more. That's very interesting. Bankman Freed's cash infusions are far from altruistic. He has emerged as a smart vulture, vulture capitalist. Oh, that's a term I think we're going to see a bit more of now, right? Vulture capitalist. Not venture, vulture. In the beleaguered crypto market, knowing full well that his own fortune depends on its healthy rebound and growth. Bankman Freed has also bought into crypto brokerage Robinhood, where FTX has already accumulated a 7.6% stake and is rumored to be considering an acquisition. Smart guy. Bankman Freed denies any active merger talks with Robin Hood, but tells Forbes that more crypto exchange failures are coming. There are some third tier exchanges that are already secretly insolvent, said Bankman. Reads FTX along with Coinbase, Kraken and Binance are giants among digital asset exchanges. They have millions of customers accounts and free functionally they operate similar to online stock brokerages. But outside of these whales, there are more than 600 crypto exchanges around the world operating in a largely unregulated frontier. Never heard of, never heard of AAX, Billance, 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 Hotbit. They aren't alone, but like Coinbase, they trade Bitcoin, Ether, and Dogecoin, Dogecoin, and offer generous margin loans as much as twenty times their initial capital out to their clients. Yeah, lacking any meaningful regulatory oversight, many crypto exchanges have been vulnerable to scammers and, and hacks. Japanese exchange CoinCheck was hanged, hacked for five hundred thirty million in crypto in twenty eighteen. Seychelles-based exchange KuCoin lost 275 million in 2020, and then in December 21, Cayman Island-based BitMart was breached for 200 million. Back in 2016, Bit, Bitty Finex was hacked to the tune of nearly 120,000 Bitcoin worth two and a half billion now. Wow. But despite the generous bailouts, not even Bankman Fleet is able or willing to throw good money after bad in perpetuity. There are companies that are basically too far gone and it's not practical to backstop them for reasons like a substantial hole in the balance sheet, regulatory issues, or that there is not much of a business left to be saved, says Bankman Freed, who declined to name any specific crypto exchanges. As Forbes reported in its analysis of the world's best 60 crypto exchanges, 
the digital asset exchange business generally lacks standards to certify a new entity before or after they start soliciting client funds. The SEC doesn't regulate the exchange and the Commodity Futures and Trading Commission has oversight of only a handful of crypto derivative markets. In the United States, there's no member organization like FINRA to self-regulate crypto exchanges. Bankman Fried is worried about continued failures because during the euphoria of rising crypto prices, exchanges kept upping the ante to attract customers with generous yields for deposits. BlockFi or Voyager were promising yield payments to customers upwards of 12% per year. They had to be paid for either by charging at least that much more interest to borrowers or more likely by putting that money to work in decentralized finance DeFi applications. That worked fine when crypto was going nowhere but up. It looks disastrous now. Hmm. Most things do when the, the engine goes in reverse. Like JP Morgan during the stock market panic and crash of 1907, Bankman Fried is taking advantage of the crypto chaos to expand his empire. He recently closed the acquisition of Liquid, troubled Japanese exchange, BlockFi and Voyager Digital are in his grip, and despite his denials, Robinhood may be next. According to sources familiar with his loans to Voyager, Alameda is likely to lose at least 70 million of the credit it had has already extended. In 2021, publicly traded Voyager's digital, Voyager's as a <laughs> Voyages as digital had a market value of more than 3 billion. Today, its shares trade for pennies and its market cap of 62 million point to imminent bankruptcy fine. Despite the carnage, Bankman Free tells Forbes that FTX remains profitable and has been for the past 10 quarters. FTX's biggest rival, Coinbase, lost 432 million in the first quarter of 2022, and its stock is almost down 90% from all time highs. Bankman Freed also has his eye on crypto miners. Yeah, that's where I would look, frankly. Not a recommendation, but the crypto mining space may be interested. Many of whom leverage their balance sheets at breakneck pace to quickly scale and take advantage of this 21st century digital gold rush. The stocks of publicly traded miners include Marathon, Digital Holdings, and Riot Blockchain are down more than 60% year to date. There you go. One bellwether crypto asset bank he's not worried about is Tether, the world's largest dollar peg stable coin with a market cap exceeding 70 billion. Many industry watchers have deemed it a ticking time bomb with questionable collateral whose failure would almost certainly be an existential threat to the entire cryptocurrency market. Tested during the lunar collapse, Tether briefly lost its $1 peg and fell to across 95 cents. However, it successfully processed over 10 billion worth of withdrawals since recovered. Says Bankman Freed, I think that the really bearish views on Tether are wrong. I don't think there's any evidence to support them. Well, there you go, guys. Very interesting. If you want to know more about crypto, man, we we followed crypto up and we followed crypto down and uh, we got a little bit lucky somewhere in between there. Um, not smart, but lucky, as they say in our business. We'll take it any time. Take a look at some of the links below, uh, specifically one to some of our mini groups, our themed mini groups. They show all different investment mini themes that may interest you. Crypto is one, cannabis is another, distressed and turnaround type assets are another, which you become obvious for obvious reason quite popular so take a look at those join the groups get involved and um, subscribe and like this video please thanks for joining greg siltman out for now